Do you know Linux and Unix are often mentioned together due to their similarities, but they are distinct entities? In this video, we will take a closer look at what Linux is, how it works, and why it is essential to learn now. According to Statista, 47% of professional developers use Linux-based operating systems. According to W3 Techs, Linux powers 39.2% of websites whose operating system is known. According to the study by IDC, Linux powers 85% of smartphones. As per Wikipedia, Linux has completely dominated the supercomputer field since 2017, with all of the top 500 most powerful supercomputers in the world running a Linux distribution. So in this digital age, knowing Linux is way more important than any other skill, so let's dive into the wonderful world of Penguin characters and Linux kernel. Linux is a free and open source operating system created by Linus Torvalds in 1991 as a hobby project. Over time, Linux has become a robust and versatile OS used globally. Its unique distribution model allows various organizations and communities to create their versions of Linux known as distributions or distros. Popular examples of Linux distributions include Ubuntu, Fedora, Debian, and CentOS. Linux follows a monolithic kernel design. In a monolithic kernel, all essential operating system functions, such as process management, memory management, device drivers, and file system access, are integrated into a single, large kernel space. This means that all kernel services and functionalities reside in the same address space and share the same memory. As a result, they can directly communicate and call each other's functions without the need for interprocess communication mechanisms. Apart from the kernel, a Linux distribution comprises various software components that build a complete operating system. These components include libraries, utilities, and graphical interfaces. Libraries provide essential functions to applications and facilitate code reusability. Utilities offer command line tools that enable users to perform various tasks efficiently. Additionally, Graphical interfaces like the X window system or Wayland provide a user-friendly environment, allowing users to interact with the system through a graphical desktop environment. Let's review how Linux differ from other operating systems. Unlike proprietary operating systems, Linux is open source, meaning its source code is freely available. As discussed earlier, Linux follows a monolithic kernel architecture where the kernel performs most operating system functions. Linux distributions are typically community-driven and provide a vast range of software packages through centralized package management systems. Linux has a reputation for excellent hardware support, with a wide range of drivers available for various hardware components. It can run on diverse hardware platforms, from embedded systems to supercomputers, making it highly versatile. Let's review some key differences between Linux and Unix. Linux was developed by Linus Torvalds in the early 1990s, while Unix was developed in the 1970s at Bell Labs. Linux is open source, and its source code is freely available under licenses such as the GNU General Public License. On the other hand, Unix source code is typically proprietary, and different versions of Unix such as Solaris, AIX, and HPUX each developed and maintained by different vendors and may have different licensing terms. Linux was written in C and other programming languages, while Unix was written in C and assembly language. Linux is free. However, corporate support is available at a price. Unix is not free and it is extremely expensive when compared to Linux. Linux is available in multilingual, but Unix is only available in English. Popular Linux distributions are Debian, Red Hat, Ubuntu, Fedora and Kali. Popular Unix distributions are FreeBSD, SunOS, MacOS, AIX, HPUX, Solaris. If you're interested in getting started with Linux, you can download the ISO file of your chosen Linux distribution, install the Linux, and take the time to explore the system and its features. Now let's jump into creating a Ubuntu Linux virtual machine by using a virtual box hypervisor. The first thing we need is an ISO image of Ubuntu software which I have downloaded from the Ubuntu website. Let's click on the new one at the top to get things started. 
A few things to define here are the name and location of the ISO image as well as where to store the new VM. In my case, I am using a directory VM on a local C drive. Click Next, and here you need to create a username and password to log into the newly created Ubuntu machine. Next, you need to define the hardware resources like memory and processors for your virtual machine. You can use a slide to choose a value or you can manually type it in on the screen. Click Next and Finish and the installation process will begin. Let's change the view to scale mode for better screen visibility. The installation process will continue. When installation is finished, you will get a login screen. Here you can enter the username and password to log into the freshly created Ubuntu virtual machine. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel for future videos and updates.